Hey guys, AJ Hazzy here and welcome back to the Vantage Report. I make these videos so that you can make informed decisions about real estate. Now I realize I'm a couple of days late on this and that's because I've actually already recorded this quarter's Vantage Report only to have some shocking news force me to have to throw that right out and re-record. So I obviously want to give you guys as accurate and as real-time info as possible. So I didn't want to bring just the rose-colored glasses with me because the stats that I was seeing as we went into our third quarter of the year were showing some amazing resilience in the market. But we have had some big news with the Bank of Canada in the last little, couple of weeks and it would be prudent for me to give you the whole picture. So that's what we're going to do today. First, we'll start with the good news. I'm going to share with you the stats so you can see how much things have improved month over month or quarter over quarter. And then we're gonna get into the discussion around interest rates, what that might do to the market in the short term and long term, and helpfully give you guys some guidance on how you can make the best possible decision for your unique situation. So let's start with the stats. I'll give you some highlights here. We saw total sales in the region surge almost 80%. We had over, over 1,300 sales compared to just over 700 in the first quarter. So that's a big, big jump in the amount of transactions that are happening. And I know a lot of real estate agents and a lot of home sellers are happy about that. Number two, we also saw some pretty major growth in the amount of dollars changing hands. Because there's more properties selling and they're actually selling for a little bit more money, we saw over a billion dollars in the last quarter change hands, representing nearly a 90% increase quarter over quarter in just the amount of transaction volume that was going on. And of course, as I've shared in previous videos, that finds its way and trickles its way through the entire economy. So that's good. That's why you're feeling things kind of humming along here in the second quarter. Now, as far as the absorption rates concerned, we're at 4.8 months worth of inventory. Things are kind of holding steady there. There's new product coming on, but it's being absorbed very quickly. So that still feels like we're in a tight inventory market, giving the balance of the negotiating power to the home sellers, which is why we've seen discounts shrink from in Q1, you could get nearly a 4% discount on the average home. Now things are selling closer to 1% of the list price. So all of that discounting has all but disappeared in the last couple of months as inventory got tighter and the momentum started to pick up. We're also noticing homes selling faster. Days on markets come from 63 days on market on average down to 50, so that's a pretty big jump. So the average transaction value is up roughly 5%, but it's not all distributed equally. Condos, they're up about 4%. Townhomes, up 3%. But the real notable is that the single family home market is up 8% over the last couple of months. Now, don't forget, condos and townhomes were very resilient during the downturn where single family homes, because of interest rates, felt it the most. They were down all but 18%. So we've reclaimed nearly half of what we lost in the third and fourth quarter last year. So now for the bad news. Rates have gone up a quarter of a point. The actual lending rates that we're seeing from the banks are actually up 40 and even 50 basis points in many cases as they're projecting another increase come July. So we're seeing a lot of tightening right now and there's a little bit of fear pumping back into the market. Now many buyers have already got uh, lower interest rate holds that will carry them for the next month to two months. But I am concerned that on the other side of that, after the meeting in July, when they do likely raise the rates again, that we're going to see a real drop off in demand. And we're going to see a lot of people potentially selling their homes because it has become uh, a little bit cost prohibitive to stay in that home and it's much cheaper to rent. So we're going to see, I think, a little bit of turnover and will there be enough demand to meet the people who are selling who are on those adjustable mortgages. Now, I read a stat that said that only one third of Canadians have actually felt the rate increases yet because their mortgages haven't come due and they weren't on a variable. And so the pain of this has not really been felt yet. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out over the next few months. I had certainly predicted that we were on the other side. The pendulum was starting to swing the other way almost every time through history when the Bank of Canada pauses on the rate increases that indicates a pivot and that they're going to start to decrease rates. Well, they didn't do that. They saw some numbers that concerned them. The consumption rate was up 5%. The unemployment rate, too many people were employed, obviously. And inflation had a little pivot where we saw the inflation rate actually increase by 0.10 of a percent, which to them signaled that they needed to continue to raise rates because they're trying to you know, really slow down and, and put the brakes on our economy. So 
How will that play out? I don't know. It's likely to me that the government and the Bank of Canada will overshoot the mark. In fact, our government and our central bankers are actually working against each other as our government invites a million new immigrants into Canada. That obviously puts pressure on goods and services. It puts pressure on the housing market where at the same time we have the central bankers trying to decrease inflation. Those two things don't really jive. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. In migration is typically very good for real estate. So immigrants coming, it's great. But how does that play out with a bank, a central bank that is mandate is to get inflation back down to 2%. So this is going to be interesting. What I do know for sure is that if you are thinking about selling your home right now, between now and the end of summer is your window. I wouldn't wait necessarily. Three months ago, waiting would have been to your advantage. Now it certainly isn't as you're as the interest rates get increasingly higher, the affordability picture gets worse for the average buyer, which means the prices will have to come down or we'll just have a much smaller buyer pool. Either way, right now is the ticket. If you're thinking of buying right now, I would certainly suggest locking in, getting a rate hold and picking up a property where potentially there's a little bit more fear in the market, price a tiny bit of risk in there, be sensible, but there's uh, still lots of great inventory out there. It's not a bad time to buy provided you're getting some good, good guidance and you're making smart decisions and you plan to be in the home for a long timeline. So hopefully you guys found that super helpful. Um, I will continue to be your eyes and ears as things change. And just like I did today, if after I record a video and something changes between now and when I release it, I'll re-record it because I only want to give you the straight goods and tell you exactly how to navigate this interesting storm. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in a couple months.